Right, so this notebook is on uh, cu building custom data sets. So how can you actually use your own data to build a data set so you can train a model to solve your problem? Um, I'm not gonna implement this code, I'm just gonna walk through it. But basically, it's really easy to do. Um, all we need to do is to create a class um, which we can index to get a particular example and that we can find the length of. So to do that, um, I have done an example here where I'm creating a, a data set class, which we could use as um, our data set in Torch. I'm, and, I'm, and I'm basically taking what is called the Stanford 40 data set, which is a data set of images of people in one of 40 different, um, like performing one of 40 different actions. And I've implemented that into a data, uh, into a, a PyTorch class here as well. So pretty much what we start with is uh, this, is a folder like this filled with images of these different people doing these different tasks. So the first, um, the first, the first task, the first label of these images can be applauding. And then, you know, there's one here climbing, but it's basically filled with all these different tasks. And so, uh, you know, you could use this data set to do classification of which tasks are they doing, but it also actually has another folder full of annotations, which is an XML file, which looks like this for each different image. So in the image named applauding underscore 001.jpg, it um, tells you these different things about it. So it tells you what class it is, but it also tells you what's the bounding box of the person. So at which pixel locations is the uh, X max, X min, Y max, and Y min of the bounding box, which surrounds the person doing the action in this photo. And so using this information, you know, maybe we've collected this data ourselves, or maybe you've got some other data, you can confer, you can convert that into um, a data set which you can use to train whatever your, your own models if you want. So basically this is what we're going to start with just in the same directory as we are working in now in in this uh, in this file. So basically we go back here and we'll create our, our class with some class name and it's not totally necessary but according to Torch uh, any data sets that you create should import from torch.utils.data.dataset, so they should inherit from that. In this initializer, I'm just passing in um, where should you know where are the images? So that was the images folder I just showed you. Where are the annotations? That's the annotations folder I just showed you. Um, by default, I've got those locations already. And then transform by default none. But if you did want to apply a transform to each particular example in this dataset, um, then we're going to pass it into the initializer and save each of these different variables as uh, this instance's um, value of that attribute. So we'll save the transform later, uh, tra save the transform here for later, and then we'll apply it in a bit. But um, we'll just give an example of that as well. Basically, other than that, the first method that you need to implement for a data set is the get item method. Um, these methods with double underscores, so like magic functions, um, and that means that they you wouldn't use them by calling uh, my instance dot um, double underscore get item. Get item defines what happens when you index the item. So when you put square brackets on the end of an, of an instance of this class with an index in, how do I get, any, get you know, whatever, um, whatever thing is in, is in this list or array of examples, um, how do I get that particular example which I've told you to get given the index? So what it means is that we can use our data set like this. So obviously this will be us initializing the class. And this is what we uh, this is what we can do when we implement our get item method. It means that we can index our instance of that class with these square brackets to get a first example. And so basically you need to define your own get item methods that take in that index and return what you actually want from it. So in my case, let's just walk through what what we're doing. Um, I am, so when we initialize it, I am basically looking in the image directory. Yeah, I get that image directory. Then I list what's in the image directory. 
So I list all of the file names, and then these will be all of the image file names. Then I sort them alphabetically, and then I put them in a list where I join the um, directory name with the image name um, for each of them, so that I end up with a, uh, a list of all of the um, uh, relative file paths to those images which I'm trying to get. And so basically when I do the, when I try and index this instance with some value, I get the image name from that uh, this instance's list of the image names and then I get the, the example at the particular index which has been passed into this function, which is when I call this. Um, and then I'm using uh, PyTorch image libraries uh, image class to open the image. So it will open that um, file path, it will actually get the data. It won't show it, it will just get the data from it so that we have the image data. Um, and then once we've got the image, that's one of the things that we're gonna return. But before we return it, we're actually gonna check, have, has, does this instance of this data set have a transform? And if it does, then we're gonna apply the transform to the image. You could also apply an, an, an um, a transform to maybe the bounding box, that's the other thing that we're going to return, but in this case I've just applied it to the image. So let's let's talk about exactly what that transform might be now. Um, so again, where we define the transform is in the initializer, we pass the keyword argument transform when we initialize this data set. So that's what I've done here. So um, we initialize the data set and then we pass it in that keyword argument transform and so here I've used transforms .to tensor. This is a um, a class from Torch Vision Transform, so Torch Computer Vision Library for and for transforming different inputs. Um, and this one transforms it from a PIL Python Image Library image into a tensor. So when we first uh, when we when we get this image here, this is using that image class from PIL. So this image is a PIL image. And then we're gonna apply this transform, which if we've got torch uh, transforms dot two tensor, it's gonna transform it from a pill image to a torch tensor. And so the output here will be a tensor. So the other thing that I'm returning from um, from a data set when I do this get item is that I'm doing all of this stuff here to get the bounding box, which has the um, the center x, y, and width and height coordinates of the um, of the bounding box in the image. So the way I'm doing that is I'm similarly using the index to index my list of annotation names, which are um, which are just the the file paths to all of these files here. So I'm just doing the same thing as I was in the images file file, um, listing all the examples there, and then getting the one at the first index, I'm just getting the file name at the first index for these annotations too. That's what I'm doing there. Then I'm using this library called ET, um, which is for passing XML, which is why I showed you one of these examples look like. Uh, so basically we're gonna pass the the uh, the file with that annotation name, and then in that annotation tree, this XML object, we're gonna find the object. Let's have a look at that again. So in this line, we're gonna find object and that is we are going to get this tag so we're going to get everything inside here and then within that we're going to do dot find bound box which is here and then this is going to uh, basically yeah be the XML for this region in here and then within there we're going to do the same thing to find the X max Y max X min and Y min and so note that, that that's not what I actually want to out output. I want to output the X center, Y center, and width and height. And so here I'm just transforming uh, those values into the width and height and center positions. And then I'm normalizing them so that the values for um, each of these coordinates is proportional to the total size of the image, not absolute. Um, and then I'm just packing those into a tuple and transforming them to a tensor and then returning both of them. So that's basically the main method you need to implement if you're making your own data set is just how do I get an example from this data set? So you need to define get item and then specify what do I do with that index to return an example at that index. The other thing which you should um, overwrite from the data set class 
by defining in your class is the length function. And this should just you just you should just be able to use this to um uh, to to query how long how many examples are in my data set. In our case, it's pretty easy. Um, we just list how many different names of images are in this data set. Cool. So then I have uh, I've made these helper functions here. Uh, one is to show the image, and that uses this um, unpack bound box function here, which basically takes in the center x y width and height dimensions of the bounding box, and then converts them to x min y min x max and y max because that's what pill uses to uh, to draw. Um, to, that's what coordinates of the rec of a, that's that's the coordinates that pill needs to draw a rectangle to draw a rectangle on the box so that when I run this show function uh, so what, yeah, what I'm doing is initializing the data set and then getting the first example using the get item method as well as also using the length method which I've defined here to print the length of it if I run this it's going to show me this guy the first example um, and I've drawn that rectangle to highlight um, where the region which I should actually be cropping, um, where I should be detecting the object is in there. And it's printed us the, uh, yeah, the different the labels there as well. So this is the printed bounding box there. And that's it. That's basically how you make your own data sets. Really easy. Just, over, just inherit the data set class from Torch and then overwrite the get item and the length methods.